So happy Black Friday to all of you folks here in the U.S. Um, and happy day after Thanksgiving. Uh, I had a wonderful day. I hope you did as well. What I want to talk about today is content processing. Um, and I did a, a blog post about this. I'll post the link uh, below in just a minute. But uh, basically, what I did this week was I shared with you my entire blueprint for uh, creating for for creating content, basically, but not just creating content because that's just the beginning, right? When you do an epic blog post or you do a video tutorial or whatever it is um, that you're going to do, that's just the beginning. Because if you just create that and send it to your list, or you just create that and you post it on Facebook, um, you're really doing yourself a disservice, disservice if you don't maximize that piece of content and squeeze every bit of juice out of that as you can. Because you put the time into it, so it may as well, you may as well, you know, bring it to as many people as you can. Um, and have it have it work for you. So I have to tell you that you know, as I was creating the the blog post and the training on how to how to go through this content creation process, I was actually at the same time testing out my content creation process because um, while I have always had a processing system like this, this is the first time I've sort of broken it down for you and for other people. And what I came out of it at the end of it um, learning is that it's a hell of a lot of work. It's like so much work. And when you look at this, when I'm, I'm about to break it down for you, you're going to be like, holy crap, like who has time for that? But, but actually, once you plug it into the system and you, um, and you make it a system and a process, then ideally you're only doing this about once a month. Somebody's commenting and they're probably telling me that they can't hear me. So, okay, that was Deb Mundy was commenting on a different video, actually. So we'll go back over here. Um, and I should just check comments real quick to make sure you guys can hear me. Okay, there's four comments. Yes, it works. That's why I'm getting the admin. Yes, it's work. Yes, it's work. Yes, it is. Um, hey, Mike. Hi, Craig. Hi, Susan. Hi, everybody. Uh, so it's a hell of a lot of work, but the idea is this, that we create maybe four pieces of content like that on a given day, make it the first of every month, make it the first Tuesday of every month, whatever works for you, then send it through this assembly line, okay? So I'm going to show you this assembly line. We're going to talk about it piece by piece, okay? Um, so now i it's one thing I forgot to do was uh, setting up in Wirecast my screen share. So let me see here. I can't remember if I do it on the same layer as my video. Let's see here. Screen capture. And you should be seeing my screen now. So let me know if you cannot. And um, we're going to go over to the content processing board. But I'm going to check in with you real quick and make sure that you are seeing my screen. I don't know why I can't get it to load on my iPad, so that just stinks. Let me go over here. Yep, loud and clear, says Diana. Hi, Diana. Okay, so here we go. Um, so I've done this on a Trello board. I think you could, you know, you could easily do this uh, in a Google Doc on a spreadsheet in a um, Google Sheets uh, that you could share with your assistant, your team, your contractors. And even if you're just doing this all on your own um, and you don't need to share it, I recommend some sort of visual platform. Maybe you put it in the form of a linear checklist, whatever works for you. Um, but for teaching how to do the assembly line, I think that Trello really works best for this purpose. So first, let's look across, okay? So um, I've got all these different steps that are lined up horizontally across my Trello board. It's very direct and ugh, to the point. So this first one says raw video from Jen. So I literally just paste a link to the Google Drive um, link 
that where I've put the video okay that's just the raw video so maybe I record my tutorial in um, in ScreenFlow or in QuickTime or in uh, Camtasia wherever I do the video then um, it's just it's not edited or anything like that I export it as an mp4 and I get and I put it on Google Drive or I could put it in Dropbox but that's where the raw link is okay so my assistant and partner and um, brilliant brilliant awesome human being Josh takes that um, video and then he edits it okay and um, once he posts it here he's gonna post it here under edits I've set up an IFTTT recipe that lets me know as soon as he posts something here I get alerted that he's done so okay so now that flags me so I need to look at the edits that he did but if you don't have an assistant doesn't matter you're just gonna take um, let's say you're gonna take your video and drag it over here okay so now you know that you that you need to edit it and you do edit it and um, it's just a visual way of keeping track of that piece of content okay so after the video is edited or concurrently because maybe you have a different person who is creating your graphics then all the graphics need to be created uh, for your um, for your content and I've got a checklist here and again all this I've put this in a tutorial and I've also put this in a PDF guide for you um, and I'll put the link in just a second below this video so you can uh, download the guide yourself but I've checked all these off um, for this particular piece of content but let me uncheck okay so you want a thumbnail for YouTube and Facebook I mean maybe you do it's like depending on what channels you are but you're using but this is what I do a thumbnail for YouTube and Pinterest and uh, or you, YouTube and Facebook videos then an image for Pinterest an image for Twitter an image for Instagram an image for your blog I actually make um, my blog graphic and my Pinterest graphic the same because it makes it um, easier for people to share your blogs on Pinterest if you do that and then um, and then I create a separate image for LinkedIn publisher which is of course different than just LinkedIn status updates okay you'll notice we you also have the opportunity to add uh, to put the attachments here once those graphics are created and you have an opportunity to communicate with each other um, let's see what did Josh say I had to revise the TN you did I don't know what that means TN TN but whatever Josh just told me something okay and I'll get alerted when he sends that to me and I can communicate with him here on this card okay then the next thing is to publish that video if it was a video that you created to YouTube and then it needs to be optimized okay um, part of optimizing is and this is um this is a really really cool thing that I just learned from Nathan Haig but if you put a timestamp in the description of your YouTube video then what will happen is um, let me show you let me just show you because we have time we're not in a rush here All right, so I'm going to click on this video. Let me mute it. Mute. Okay, uh, so we're going to look at the description. Now look at this. First of all, notice that there's a whole bunch of words here, right? So YouTube loves words um, because YouTube's, YouTube is part of Google. So you want to give words to YouTube because it's going to help you be that much more searchable. Um, but anyway so as you can see here Josh has put in timestamps to bring people to maybe just what you know the most important nugget that might be in that video because yes I would like them to watch the whole video but the truth is we're all in a hurry and the chances are that people are not gonna watch the whole thing but maybe you just want them to grab the most important points plus people really appreciate this so watch what happens when I click on this timestamp okay well what the heck just happened it took me back to my page 
I think it's because I'm watching not as a viewer, but as the administrator. So the point is when you click on that timestamp, it'll take you directly to that point in the video. And you put that in the description. Um, while we're talking about optimizing, so um, there is this, Josh copies and pastes all these links to every video that I do. And, you know, at the very minimum, you want to have links to different places where people can connect with you or maybe courses that, that relate to the video that it is that you're talking about or a freebie that you have or a blog post or whatever. Okay. Um, let's see, and I've got a list here for optimizing. You want to make sure that you use keywords in your description, that you create a transcript, um, that you um, have end screen, an end screen and annotations, um, cards, because you can link cards, like places where people can click within your video, and, um, and then I want Josh to add the MP4 when he's done uploading this YouTube link to uh, to Google Drive. Okay, um, let's see here. Then, don't pay attention to these numbers. Like this, it jumps from four to six, but that's because I just moved a couple of things around. I thought that made more sense. So when you're in YouTube, you're able to create SRT files. I don't know what SRT stands for. I forgot, but this is what enables your videos on YouTube and on Facebook to show those captions, like closed captions. So people don't have to turn the sound on when they're standing in line in the grocery store and they're watching your video on their phone, they can keep the sound off and still see what you're watching. This is enormously helpful in terms of uh, keeping the engagement high on your video content. Um, and okay, so after the SRT is uploaded, upload it to Facebook and schedule it with a post date. For me, I do this on Tuesday at um, at 7 a.m. And there's the checklist here, okay, on the assembly line. It's very clear. We just check off as, as it's been done, okay? So I can see and Josh can see what's been done. Now, um, what was I going to say? I guess that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, now the next thing you need to think about, and really this is probably going to come before you do all this, right? Look, this is going to come in the actual creation process as you're creating your content, um, your tutorial or your video. What freebie do you want to go along with it? Because if you're going to go to all this trouble to crank this, this baby out um, on all these channels, then you definitely want it to be worth your while uh, and you want to be collecting the email addresses of the people who are interested in this stuff, right? And start building your list. So in order to do that, it's not enough to just have that tutorial um, because, because they're getting the tutorial, right? Like they don't have to opt in for that. So you want a little content upgrade or freebie to go with it. So you're going to think about um, what, I'm trying to think if I put a checklist here. Um, you want to think what is that freebie that you're going to be created. And I have a second person who actually helps me create my freebies, okay? So she's on this board and we communicate here and uh, and we talk about whatever that freebie is going to be, okay? Um, and then we want to make sure if it's a PDF that it gets uploaded to Amazon S3 so it gets its own link, okay? Then we want to publish this to our blog. And in my case, my blog is on uh, Squarespace, okay? And each time, ideally, we're dragging this content from board to board to board as it gets more stuff added to it. Then we want to send an email list. Um, and, you know, you could do this well in advance, especially if you use something like ConvertKit, um, and you can have it scheduled to coincide when all this other stuff is scheduled. So, you know, on Facebook, I will post it, but it will be, it won't post right away. I'll have it scheduled to go out Tuesday morning. At the same time, 6.30 a.m. Tuesday morning, my email is going to go to my list and I can schedule it in advance to post to my blog. Everything concurrently at the same time. Then also, I come over here to only Pult, and I'm going to give you a look at that. I just posted a link to this in the front row because uh, Rachel Lancaster um, brought to my attention that there's a great Black Friday sale for OnlyPult. Um, 
and they have a free seven day trial seven day trial here but let me log in so I can show it to you oh and of course I'm not gonna remember I don't know I don't know what my password is I usually go here on another computer so we're gonna try but probably ain't gonna work ah it worked awesome okay so it's so simple it's basically like this you add a post this is for Instagram you're gonna load the picture up from your from your PC once you do that um, let me just do it so I can walk you through it let's find a picture I'll just grab any old picture I don't seem to have any that look like Instagram posts well, let's just pretend this is an Instagram post. It's not. It's a Pinterest post, but so it won't be formatted correctly. But this will give you the idea of how only poll works, okay? Click next again. Cuz you can add filters from here from here as well, but I I don't I don't do that. Okay, now we're going to add our description. Blah 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 blah. Maybe one hashtag or maybe two. That's it. Okay? I always do Jen's tips. And maybe that what is this about Twitter cards so I'll do um, hashtag Twitter tips okay then we can also from here add our emoji okay so there's a little emoji um, and then if you click on hashtags it 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 does have these categories for you I don't recommend that you that you do your hashtags from there then you can add a geotag and it just so happens that I created one for my business. There it is. So I'm going to select that. You can only do that through Google if you've actually like verified your location through Google and they put it on the map and all that. So don't worry about the geotag. Okay. Then you're going to add your description, which we already did, your emoji, your hashtag, your geotag. Then notice that it says add first comment so those of you who are Instagram um, ninjas you know all about this but basically the way to really get a lot of eyeballs on your on your um, Instagram post is to put a whole bunch of hashtags you can put up to 30 but you want to put them in the comment not in your description because it looks super spammy if you put that in your description and you definitely probably don't want to use 30 hashtags but you can use a lot okay so um, so now this is where you're gonna put uh, you know this is where I might put social media tips um, solopreneur mompreneur mumpreneur all that kind of stuff that's gonna bring eyeballs to this content that is relevant they want to be you want them to be relevant hashtags so when this posts to Instagram it's also gonna automatically post that first comment with the hashtags so that's awesome then um, you want to so you're gonna set your date here for whenever you want it to post and of course I'm gonna use um, that same date and time that I'm doing for my email my my Facebook post um, and my blog post all that's gonna coincide and it's all gonna happen at the same time what's also cool and I used this when I was promoting summer camp is you can delete posts after an hour or a day or whatever so what I had was I had like 30 days worth of social media tips that I was posting to my Instagram account every day so I had them scheduled to go out in the morning and they would delete in the evening because I didn't want my Instagram feed to be filled with promotion right but I definitely did want to promote on Instagram so I would use all the I would use the right hashtags I would post in the morning it would delete in the evening and the new one would post the next day and I was able to set that up set that up way in advance okay so I really really like I've really enjoyed this tool I think it's I think it's great um, and that they, they are having a, a big sale now I am an affiliate for them so if you want that link I'll I'll post it down down below um, and then a lot of an, there's another tool that a lot of people like insta oh I can't remember if you know what it is just post it post it in the comments okay let's get back to our content processor okay so that's so that's Instagram um, so we've scheduled that now we want to um, now we want to schedule it on meet Edgar I'm not going to go big into meet Edgar a lot of you have moved uh, from Edgar to recur post 
I, I do recommend it. I haven't myself moved because I just have so much content on Edgar and it's it's just a it's just something I'm procrastinating. I am eventually going to move to recur post, but it's basically um, this is mainly I'm going to put my blog post in there and my blog post is then going to circulate um, on an evergreen cycle and it's going to go out on Twitter mainly um, uh, and it's it's with all my other blog posts that are going to be circulated out around the clock and I don't have to I don't have to ever do it again. It'll just keep doing it for me. Uh, until I decide if I ever decide that that is outdated or not good content anymore, then I'll remove it. Okay, then we're going to schedule it um, to Pinterest. This is a whole other like um, live stream in and of itself. But what I use for that is a is a program called Board Booster, uh, which I really like a lot. I just started using it a few weeks ago, and it's amazing. Okay, Board Booster. Then. Um, I'm going to stream that week about, I'm going to do a Periscope, um, a Snapchat story, um, a Facebook Live, which actually that's what this is right now. That's what I'm doing. So I pushed this blog post out on Tuesday, I believe, and I will be pushing out a new blog post um, uh, on next Tuesday. So between that blog post and the next one, I want to talk up this content. I want to let people know that it's out there. I worked hard on it. I think it's a really valuable and I think people would really appreciate it. So I got to, it's up to me to let people know about it because um, who else is going to do that for you? No one. You got to get it out there. You've got to tell people that you've done this. You can't think that just because you posted it to your Facebook business page and even if you send it to your email list, it's not enough. Okay. Not, not really. Not if you're serious about, about, um, really promoting your content so that people can en engage with you and really get the value from your from your brilliance okay so um so actually when i'm done with this live stream i am going to go on to periscope and basically do this exact same thing all over again um of course it'll look a little different because i'm not going to be able to share my screen so I'll, I'll be talking um maybe i'll i'll put my phone on the tripod and show my computer screen that way but it, it definitely won't be this long okay um then, okay, Snapchat story, Facebook Live. Now, this Facebook Live video that you're watching right now, this live stream, what's going to happen is Josh is going to take it. He's going to add SRT files so that the text will be overlaid over the top of this. And then this will get promoted um, as a whole separate piece of content, separate from my blog post. And we'll promote this and send this out into the Facebook world. And, um, and maybe repurpose it somehow, maybe even upload it to, uh, to YouTube, but it becomes its own piece of content. Very meta, right? All right. So, um, produce Facebook live video. Well, that's basically what I just said. I just turned it into a second, a second, um, post over here. Okay. Um, now publish to LinkedIn publisher. So we're going to look at, look at that real quick. We're going to go over to LinkedIn. Hopefully, I don't have to log in because I never remember the password. Um, we're going to give this a shot. I bet it's not going to work. Aha, it did work. Awesome. I hate the way it, 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 it now logs you into Campaign Manager because, of course, it wants you to advertise on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, so what you do with Publisher, it's different than just a status update. You do want to do a status update every time you create new content, for sure. You want to, you you definitely want to do that. But this is the most important thing. You want to go over here to write new posts, and you're going to click write new post. And um, this is where that graphic that you created specifically for LinkedIn is going to come into play. You're gonna you're gonna put your pretty little graphic there, and you'll. This is a complete. A complete, comprehensive, fully operational um, word processor right here inside LinkedIn. So what you're going to do is basically copy and paste the exact words from your blog post. You're going to copy and paste them right here, but you're also going to add cool things. You're going to add the video right here, okay? You're going to add an image right here. You are going to add links you are potentially going to add in a slide deck. You can add some code right here to embed just about anything. 
So it's really, really cool. And what happens is, and don't forget this, you, you are going to add hashtags that are relevant to this topic because they really do, it really does enable you to reach tons of people on LinkedIn. And, um, and when you publish this, all of your LinkedIn connections are notified that you published. And, um, and if LinkedIn picks it up, if there's a little bit of activity, they'll send it out through their publishing um, platform called Pulse. And uh, you could potentially get thousands of views on an activity on your on your um on your published piece and you didn't really have to do anything other than copy and paste the content from uh from your blog post and i'll show you what this looks like so this is the one that i just did on the topic that we're talking about right now so i've got my graphic um, you'll notice i just pasted in the pictures um, the links to, um, oh, I created a template. That's the other thing. You guys will have to have this as well when you go over to the blog post. So I created a template of this assembly line for you. It's a blank template. Well, it's, it doesn't have all my personal notes, but it's got all the prompts for you. Um, and you can turn this template into your own. You copy it, paste it to your Trello board, and then you've got this assembly line. Um, and I, of course, made this available to the people on LinkedIn as well. There's the video. And, um, and there you go. And it was so easy to do. And I basically do this with all of my blog posts. And I recommend that you do the same. You might as well. Uh, then post it to, I post it to all of my groups where it's relevant. And I think it'll be helpful. And sometimes even to groups that aren't mine, if I have permission from the administrator and I think it's something that, you know, is logical and it and helpful and it's not going to be spamming the group in any way um, then what I'll do is I'll go over to my personal Facebook page you heard that right and this gives us an opportunity to talk about um, using your personal page a little bit to draw attention to your work with the right people not your uncle Bobby you know it's it's we only want to do this and let our work people see this. We don't want to bug our personal friends and family. And the way that you do that is, first of all, when you accept friend requests from people who you don't really know, but you know they found you in a group or something, um, then what you would do is, let's look here. I'm sure I have some friend requests. Okay, so here's friend requests. Now, I'm going to look through. Now, this person, Alexandra, and I have 137 mutual friends. And when I hover over that, I can take a quick look and see that these are all business related. So I'm going to confirm her friend request, but then I'm going to immediately add her to another list. And the list that I'm going to add her to is one that I call ICA, Ideal Client Audience. You could call it whatever you want, but the point is, it's a way for me to segment out people who are my business people, okay? So when I come over here to my personal page, when I post my blog post and I just want those people to see it, I'm, instead of choosing public, I'm going to click more options and then I'm going to choose that list. So the only people who are going to see that blog post are those people who are business related. So again, just one of those ways to get some extra organic reach that you that you might not get otherwise, right? You, they actually might have a better chance of seeing it over here than on your business page, which of course is the other place where you want to post your um, post your blog post or your content. The next thing that we're going to do is actually run an ad to, or this is what I do, I run an ad to the blog post um, just for engagement. I'm not asking for conversions. Um, and I do this for $5 a day uh, for about seven days. And, um, and then there's all sorts of things you can do after that. So, um, so at this point, we're just, we just want people to see the blog post, right? So that's all I'm asking Facebook for. And Facebook loves that. They love it when when you run an ad to something that is just good content and and that's it, right? And yes, there's an opt-in opportunity for people on that blog post, but it's not, it's really not, there's no pop-up, it's not really in your face. It's really just good content and Facebook loves it when you do that. Um, so it tends to be that you get really good um, results from your, from your investment when you do that. 
Then what you can, you can do several things after that. Um, you can create a custom audience of the people who viewed that, that blog post and then retarget them and then ask them conver- for conversions on something else. Uh, because you're, you know, you're building trust and people are getting to know you and, um, and, and they're seeing what you're bringing to the table. And this is, this is, this is, you know, this whole thing that I'm showing you right now, this is really all about, um, the long game. And I'm going to come back to you here. So this is all about the, the, the long game. This is not a, uh, get rich quick um, scheme. This is if you're if you're serious about online business and you really um, are serious about building your brand, building your business online. There's no shortcut. I mean, this is a shortcut. I mean, I've I've tried to shortcut it for you as much as possible by creating this template so you could go. Okay, now I need to do this. Okay, now I need to do this. So for sure, that's a shortcut. But there's no shortcut around the good content part. There really isn't. So as much as I've been preaching these days about micro content, um, and I do believe in micro content, keep it tight, keep it to the point, because that's what people want. Put those timestamps in, in, in your videos so people can get to what they need right away. Creating really good, valuable content is really important. And it doesn't have it happen overnight. And it's not, it's not that one epic blog post you do that's going to be like, all right, I'm set, I'm done. Now I get to sit back and watch my audience explode and watch people buy my course. You know, passive income's just going to be rolling in. It, it's not exactly like that. It's, it's, you do that great blog post, you got another one that comes right behind it and another one that comes right behind it. And look at the people who you think do it best. And that really is all the validation that you need for, for this, right? That's, that's what I do. I look at the people who are doing it very well, who are having financial success and also have like an audience of raving fans. And those people just create good content and, um, and, and, and you just can't get around it. And if you love what you do, and I know that you do, or you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't have stuck around this long. If you, I mean, I don't mean on this live stream, but I mean, uh, in the online business, um, world in general, none of us would be doing this if we didn't really enjoy what we were doing. So that helps, right? But batching is, um, helps it to be not such a chore. It really does. And, and this leads me to my next, um, and I'm going to check comments here too in a second. But this leads me to my next point, and uh, you will be hearing me talk a lot about Todd Herman in the next couple of weeks because he's going to be launching 90 Day Year again soon. Everything that I've shown you is completely 100% inspired by by that course. It's a course, but it's also um, a system. Like you're buying a system, and it completely changed my the way that I operate my business. I, my business went from being um, just something, if I'm being truthful, I would say it was more on the spectrum. It was more on the hobby end. You know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like I was going to be able to, uh, really, um, count on my business to sustain me or anyone else because it was too up and down. I'd have a launch. It'd be all right, but then there'd be some downtime and I would get distracted with, the different courses or tools or whatever. And then I'd have another series of like success and then there'd be a lull, but there really wasn't a, a true, um, plan, a true blueprint for my business. And, um, and the very first like three days in this course, everything changed, everything changed. Um, so I will be promoting it and yes, I'm an affiliate, but honestly, if even if I wasn't an affiliate for this program, I would be jumping up and down and, you know, screaming to everyone who is online biz- in online business to just to just get on board um, right away and um, and don't look back. There's nobody that I've recommended to this program who has not been like, oh my god, like this is ga- completely game changing. Um, and the thing about Todd is when oh, and I've got the link I'm going to put in. It takes you to um, to at least one of his videos that is really, really good. But if you sign, when you click the link that I'm going to give you and sign up for just the launch, you'll get all of his videos. And the truth is I was really on the fence about buying his course in the beginning because 
I felt like I got so much out of his, um, those first few days of videos that he sent out that I kind of felt like I got what I needed, that I didn't even need to sign up for the course. That's how good um, those, those videos are. So he talks about, like when, when I mentioned batching, he has something that he calls um, block and tackling. Okay, blocking and tackling. Sort of kind of like batching, but more, you know, he, he definitely goes more in depth. Um, so definitely check that out. And now I'm going to check uh, your comments. It makes me nervous to have waited this long to check your comments because it might be that you can't even see me anymore. Um, I thought I had this tabbed. There you go, front row. Oh, I'm not in the front row. I'm on my business page. Hold on. Okay. Okie dokie. Ooh, I got 22 comments. Yike. Okay. Um, Laura says, your biz sounds like mine. I'm where you were. Laura, you're where I was, but you're also so much farther along. You're like, you're doing things. Um, you're doing everything right. And, um, and, and you're going to move a lot more quickly than I did. You know, it's, I don't know why. Maybe if I do this. I can't see all the comments at one time. I don't know. More quickly than I did. You know, it's, I don't know why. Maybe I, I cannot see all your comments. I don't know why I can see four comments. Uh, so Laura said clicks the website. Isn't that what I said? Yeah, it was, it's clicks, clicks the website. But I really feel like the last time I ran this the other day, it didn't exactly say clicks the website. But that's that's all that would that's what my objective um, is for those ads is click click to website, not conversions, not video views, clicks the website because I just want them to look at the blog post. Um, OK, so I'm not seeing I can see just the I could just only see the five most recent comments. I don't know why. Um, it's really annoying. I wish I could see all your comments. I'm going to try one more time. Oh, and I'm going to paste. I'm going to paste the link to Todd's um, video so you can get on his launch. And then I'm also going to paste the link to um, to my blog post that has the templates for this, which is jenlaner.com slash blog dash content um, slash assembly line. And let me post that here. Okie dokie. So now I'm going to take this uh, show on the road. I'm going to head on over to Periscope and Snapchat. And uh, then I get to check this all off my list and um, move on to promoting the next blog post. So that's just, that's just how, it, how it's got to, how it's got to be. Um, and it's a good thing, I think. So, uh, okay. I don't, I'm sorry that I cannot see your comments. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm going to try one more time from my iPad. And then uh, if that doesn't work, then I'll just have to answer your question in the, in the comments. See, I'm, I've got my giant iPad, which really is not good for anything except for watching movies. I think on the airplane, um, it, I don't, I don't really understand. I, I like my, I like the smaller iPad better. Okay, I'm on home. See, and it won't let me see, it won't let me see my whole, um, my whole page.